we're back. Uh, nobody else knows we're back, <laughs> but we are. <laughs> so I have with me uh, Carl today, and uh, Carl has so graciously um, accepted hosting a round table, maybe a big table, at uh, AEC Acoustics this year. Um, we've got about two and a half months from this point. Um, we're about 50% registered, so that's good. I'm looking to see more people come. But uh, Carl has decided to talk about the, uh, or I guess host, the practical uses of AI for small teams. And uh, first thing I want to do is just get a little bit of background on Carl, what he does. Um, he's kind of got two two sides of his personality or two businesses per se. So he's got his, uh, his commercial brand he upholds, and then he has his uh, X persona that he upholds or his Twitter persona for everybody that uh, didn't know about the transition. So let's get a little bit of background and then we'll jump into the topic you'll be hosting. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for the uh, invite to, to play a role in this uh, AEC Acoustics uh, roundtable session. Uh, my name is Carl Storms. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my persona is the BIM Sider. Uh, but, you know, what I do is I'm a technical solutions lead for New Forma. And that's just a fancy way to say is with my uh, years in the industry, I help the sales and marketing team to understand what this wonderful world of BIM and AECO is. I make sure we're all on top of the latest trends like AI and uh, make sure that everyone understands what we do at New Forma. Um, as far as you know, background, I am an architectural technologist by trade, long, long time ago, um, and I've done a little bit of everything in the you know AECO industry, commercial, residential architecture. Spent some time in the BIM and VDC side for the general contractors. Uh, taught at the local community college, uh, you know, training folks with Revit, and then after that, I went to the reseller route doing consulting. So that was kind of cool. It took me all over the world doing consulting and training, which led perfectly to getting into uh, New Forma, where I, you know, work on the software side. So again, well-rounded. And this is where we insert the tall joke and uh, or short joke, as it might be, and carry on from there. It's ama it's amazing. Every time I talk to you, I learn something new. I didn't know you uh, taught at a community college. That's fascinating. Um, yeah. So every single time we chat, you've lived many lives, it seems. Um, so <laughs> you keep being reincarnated as another subject matter expert is what happens. So back in the day, you're probably an AutoCAD SME, right? And then you were reincarnated so as a Revit SME. <laughs> it, it did. It did start. That's where it started for sure. Well, well, I'm, I'm, I know that it's some of that's my first time hearing it. Um, so in, in terms of being well-rounded, uh, as Carl and I were chatting through a few different topics, uh, I noticed that he was posting a lot about a kind of, let's call it a hashtag 100 days of AI or 100 days of AI challenge on X slash Twitter. Um, and I reached out and just said, what do we think about just chatting about AI in general or, or pro productivity uses or uses for small teams? Um, really focusing on like weeding through everything that kind of gets people caught up in a hype bubble or maybe is a slight waste of time. And, and Carl actually has an interesting um, theory in general about saving time with AI. And so we just thought, well, maybe we propose a session that um, focuses solely on practical uses, just things that you can get, um, some of your time back each day. So if you would just chat through kind of the thought process of one, like why a hundred days of AI, like why that's interesting to you. Um, you'll find that if you don't already know Carl, he's just extremely curious, which is why I think he will make a great round table host. Um, and, uh, his curiosity is not prodded with opinion. His curiosity is prodded by genuine appreciation of other people's opinion as well, which makes him even better for hosting. Um, so if you could go through the what spurred the 100 days of AI and then kind of your philosophy on uses of AI for the industry and maybe what some someone would get out of the roundtable. Absolutely. And I think, you know, as Adam was saying, I'm working on this uh, 100 days of AI started January 1st. Um, and I certainly wouldn't call myself a subject matter expert on it, but dealing with the the curious theme, I like, you know, SMC, subject matter curious. And the idea is kind of learning about these different topics, these different things uh, that you can do in AI. You know, AI is not just about, um, you know, 
thinking and doing everything for you, but it's about all these little tools that you can find and use that are going to save you a couple minutes per task. And it's by taking those couple minutes per tasks that you do multiple times a day that you start saving a lot of time. And with that time that you have saved, then you can do the stuff you really enjoy in your day-to-day -day work, whatever that might be in your workflow. Um, so, that, so that's really where the idea came and where it went in. I sort of liking it back to when, when Dynamo first hit the scene and everybody's saying, look at all the great things we can make. We can augment designs with this. But then where it really got the foothold in the industry was those small little bits of automation that it can do that boring stuff that we don't want to do and i think the power in you know artificial intelligence is giving us the humans the creative people a uh, time back in our day to do that creative stuff the stuff that really gets you know the juices flowing if you want gets us excited in the day and and that's what we really want to sort of strive to promote in this um this round table and and i think the other thing from this and that i've learned during my uh you know 100 days of ai challenge is something called the ai sandwich um, I'm sure there's a more elegant way to put it, but, you know, I, I like a simple sandwich. I'm a lunchbox guy. Um, but the idea is that, you know, the sandwich, there's three parts. There's the bread, there's your filling, and there's, then there's the bread at the bottom, the bottom of it. And the humans are the bread. So we have the idea, we have the concept, we have something that we want to improve, and we take it to an AI platform, and we say, hey, how can we tweak this? How we can we make it better? And the AI gives us that that filling, that content. And then as the human, once we get that back, we have to validate that it's proper. We have to validate that it's right. We have to give it our own little spin, speak in our voice, and uh, tweak it. And then we have the full sandwich that we can present for uh, everyone to enjoy. So I present to you, right, Adam, right. the AI sandwich. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Do you cut it a uh, square or on a bias when you serve the sandwich? Oh, to... it's definitely diagonal. It's definitely diagonal. Yeah, you got to have triangles, of... right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But not 45, it's, strongest... it's like a 30 degree. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you got to leave a little bit of a chunky bit at the end of one yeah. side. Yeah, Absolutely. it's not all, triangles aren't just for structural engineers. They're for sandwiches as well, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, so what I love about this topic and what I think a lot of others will love is we, we tend to associate AI with like magical or something that would uh, replace us. But realistically, you're going to frame it through uh, a lens, a sandwich lens, uh, to use your same metaphor of, well, without the curiosity of the person and without the creativity of the person, mundane tasks can't become creative tasks or creative tasks can't become rigorous. Creativity without goal or without end is just exploration of creativity. But if we can frame that through well, I wonder what I could be doing while my Revit file opens within ChatGPT or Dolly or something like that. That'll get me back some time that I would have otherwise just, you know, kind of been sitting at my desk twiddling my thumbs. I, I use AI, quite frankly, for just about everything, but it's not what anyone would suspect. And I think that's what we're going to get out of this session is a lot of open discussion on, you know what, Carl, like, what is it useful for? We've heard a lot about rendering. We hear a ton about rendering, but what about everything else that makes up my business? Um, AI has come in really, really clutch a few times with uh, Revit formulas. That's that's one that I, I don't have to remember things anymore. I just propose parameters and things I'm trying to do, and then it spits out the other end. So I'm sure you could think of, at the end of your 100 days of AI, 100 different things we could do at bare minimum. So um, you like anything to add? Um, anything that I may have missed? I, well, I, I think you got it all, and and I th I think you have it right. You know, the idea is how we can tweak and 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 improve what we're doing. You know, and just cause some of the the things that I've learned about during this session is there's a couple of little add-ins out there that will allow you to basically talk to your Excel file, your CSV file, or allow you to talk oh, to yep. your PDF. So you think how you might use ChatGPT as you know to bring something up, but if you have, uh, you know. 150 page PDF of specs, you can upload it into this platform, right. which essentially allows you to do the same thing to that PDF that you can do with chat GPT. So you can ask it questions. You can have it show you information. Um, and yeah, so that's saving you time. You should still yeah. read your specs. Yeah, you should still know what's in there. But sometimes before that meeting, you just want a little reminder of what you, uh, what you learned earlier so that you can be prepared. Yeah, it's a really good point, actually. Um, 
So it doesn't just mean mundane and boring. It means something that's actually very critical to your job that you're trying to fast track while making more rigorous, while finding more insight. Insert this discussion. So I think everybody's going to have a lot, uh, actually a lot to give for this one too. So um, I guess in closing, what I'll do um, with this session is I'm going to leave a few links on the AAC Acoustics page. Uh, I would like you guys to know Carl both personally and professionally. So I'll, I'll do a bit of a leave behind there. And um, uh, if you have any questions, honestly, Carl's so friendly. Reach out on X slash Twitter. Um, I don't think he sleeps because it doesn't matter when I've I've messaged him. He always writes back. So um, I mean, it's the weekend right now. And Carl's still still. Uh, would you say subject matter curious? So That's we're right. recording on Absolutely. the weekend. <laughs> I, I just did so, my uh, hundred days of AI. So, oh, there you go, there you go. Um, all right, so looking forward to it, Carl. Um, it won't quite quite get you out of a winter storm, but it'll be kind of on the front end of your spring that you'll be I'll heading down it. to Florida to visit. All right, well, thank you, sir. Thank you. See you, everyone.